This is Eric Haber, a.k.a. the poker player formerly known as Sheets uh, for Poker X Factor slash Poker News. And I want to talk to you today about building sound fundamentals in No Limit Hold'em tournaments. And I kind of thought of this as I was butchering my club championship in golf a couple of weeks ago. And one thing that the person who taught me golf taught me was that once your swing starts to starts to disintegrate and you start to hit a lot of crappy shots before worrying about all the little nuances go back to the real fundamentals go back to your stance your grip go all the way back to the beginning and that's usually where your leaks can be found and i found the same in poker as well when players of all different abilities whether it be beginners or even experts start to really lose they start to overthink why they're losing and overthink issues in their games where usually what it comes down to is the fact that they've abandoned their fundamentals and they sometimes have to go back to that. So what I want to do is review what I believe are the true fundamentals of No Limit Hold'em tournaments and go over some of the ways we can ensure that these fundamentals don't get lost. Um, I've always believed, and it's become even clearer over the last couple of years, that really no limit hold'em tournaments just come down to three things, and that is hand strength, position, and aggression. Hand strength meaning how good your hand is pre-flop. In other words, what kind of hand do you have? What starting hands are you even playing in the first place? Position meaning um, are you acting last? Are you close to the button? Uh, and aggression, as you might imagine, is the more aggressive you are, obviously that's a really good thing. And what I've found is that if you have all three of these things, a good hand, position, and aggression, you have an incredible edge in pretty much every hand that you play. Um, if you have two of these things, like a really good hand and either position or the or being the aggressor, then you're also in pretty good shape. But once you start having only one of these three things, uh, you seem to have uh, problems winning hands. And if you have none of these things, if you have a crappy hand in terrible position and you're being passive, you really have no chance. So what I want to do is kind of, for you people who are just getting started out there, to help build good fundamentals right from the ground up. And for you kind of experts out there, just remind you of what how these fundamentals can be lost on you and just kind of just give you a little checkpoint to make sure that you haven't lost them yet. So what I want to do today is probably just review the first aspect of, of this, and that is hand strength. What hands are you playing? Now, for those of you that are just starting, you know, this might be a little more directed to you, but even for you more advanced players, you'd be surprised how quickly we could start to, to, to stray from what our hands that we're really supposed to be playing. So everybody, let's just go back to basics and ask ourselves why we select hands in the first place, okay? What about certain poker hands are worth playing and what are not worth playing. And well, for that, you have to ask yourself, what are you actually trying to accomplish in a hand? Okay. Before you even put any chips in the pot, when you have a hand in front of you, you have to ask, what are you trying to do in the first place? Um, and there are a lot of things you're trying to do. One thing you might be trying to do is just win the pot preflop. Come in for a raise, make people fold, win what's in the middle before you even have to show anything. Um, or if someone comes in for a raise before you, maybe three bet them or blow them out of the pot just to win the pot preflop. And you have to think about what hands are good for that purpose. Uh, second reason you'd play a hand is if you do not necessarily think you're going to win the pot preflop is if you do have to see the flop, it would be nice to have a hand where you could actually connect if for some degree of purpose, you know, so with some degree of not certainty, but a decent percentage of the time, you're going to want to be able to connect with what comes on the flop. Um, so certain hands are good for that. Uh, next, there are certain hands where we what we want to do is be able to semi-bluff on the flop, which means basically that even if we don't hit our hand on the flop, maybe if we bet it, well, maybe people will fold, and there's a chance that our hand could improve to a level where we're happy. 
So some hands are really good to semi-bluff the flop. Now, the other thing I wrote down here, which um, – you know, might be confusing to some people. We'll get to that. And for those more advanced players, you know what I'm talking about here. We have to consider whether a hand is easy to play or hard to play, whether it's a trouble type of hand or an easy type of hand to play. And there we might have to talk about something a little more advanced called implied odds, but we will get to that in a little bit. So these are the things that we're going to be thinking about when we talk about hand selection. What are you trying to accomplish? Whether to be win the pot pre-flop, connect on the flop, semi-bluff the flop, and you have to consider whether these hands are going to be easy to play or not. Um, now, as far as what types of hands we're talking about, these are pretty easily broken down, well, in its most basic form between pairs, non-pairs. I and mean, that's pretty much it, right? Pairs are anything, you know, a pair of twos through a pair of aces. And non-pairs, which is just essentially anything else. Now, you've seen that I put 78 pairs. How on earth could there be 78 pairs? And, and, and 1,248 non-pairs? I mean, what, what kind of deck am I using? I mean, the thing is, is that even though there are only 13 pairs, twos through aces, there are six combinations where each pairs can be made. I mean, you could do the math on your own. Remember, each suit counts. So if you have four cards, if you have four suits, there are six different ways that you could make, say, a pair of twos. And, you know, likewise for non-pairs, there are actually more ways that you can make those hands because of the different combinations of suits. So while there are only 13 pairs, you have to multiply that by the number of combinations, so you'll have 78 pairs. And you'll just have to trust me on this for now, that for non-pairs, total number of combinations are 1,248. And the reason why I bring that up is something we're going to get to later on, maybe, is the question is, how often do you really get a good hand? And we will get to that probably a little bit later. Um, all right, so let's talk about a couple of these things as far as starting hand requirements. What types of hands are good if you want to just win the pot preflop? If that's your only goal, pairs, non-pairs, maybe suited connectors like those little five, six of hearts type hands or four or five of spades, things like that. 